I think we should do mandatory therapy and Medicare for all just for this reason. Okay. Like I, I think we can make an, we can make an argument for therapy, like universal healthcare and therapy for everybody specifically by pointing to this and other tweets and other takes like this. So we can just like eliminate it from uh, public consciousness. Bernie needs to do a speech with clips like this playing in the background. Yes. Men and women are chirping on TikTok comment sections. And the only way we can stop them from chirping nonstop is by doing Medicare for all and healthcare and mental health care for all Americans. Let's get to some fun. TikTok hates your relationship by Drew Gooden. Let's take a look. I'm going to go watch a wholesome quick. video on TikTok or Instagram and makes you feel good. I mean, so much of the internet can be this toxic argumentative wasteland, but for once you're sitting there some fun. You're smiling at your phone. Imagine, I'll be back. That. Imagine a piece of content that actually makes your day better. And then you open up the comment section and it's a war zone. Going into 2023 with the same person since 2010. Oh, that's nice. They've been together for a very long time. Clearly they've worked hard and been able to make a life for themselves centered around their shared interest. And I mean, really that's the dream for anybody, no matter what that shared interest may be. And who cares about this? Cringe. Video gaming is the worst hobby one could have. What a waste of time. Not like what I do, which is spend all day on my phone telling other people that they're wasting their time. I'm pissed. Living behind a screen. Aren't you doing the same thing? No. You have gamer in your bio. Are gamers extremely lazy? Do they ever get up? I like to think that this person isn't making fun of them. They're just genuinely concerned for their well-being. Like, wait, have they really been sitting there for 13 years? I hope they're okay. What if they got stuck? Like, I know that you're opening yourself up to criticism whenever you post anything online. That's just the nature of the internet. But it's crazy that even the most uncriticizable posts where someone is just happily doing something and isn't hurting anyone else in the process still gets criticized. All right, here's another TikTok about dishes. In our house, I cook, he does the dishes. And when he cooks, wake up. He does the dishes. Harmless joke, right? They're just subverting expectations of what you might have expected her to say. So really, there's no reason for someone to get like super pissed about this or anything. Oh, so he's twice as useful as you are. L girlfriend. So much entitlement. The women that posted this and the women that are commenting on this, just because you don't like doing it doesn't mean he does. So about helping and being a good person. He rather does the dishes because he knows you'll never do it without moaning about it or showing the initiative to just do it. You just let him do it because you're lazy and entitled, feeling offended when called out but ask yourself if you're feeling called out doesn't that prove my point this yeah dude women are so bad women bad i mean honestly fellas am i right women bad oh yeah oh yeah women so bad Ooh. video is eight seconds long L women. slavery that's right someone watched this video and thought oh my god dude i love i love how like unhinged when I'm not the recipient of these kinds of comments, it's so funny to watch from afar. Cause like, you know, this is, this is reminding me of like my, uh, unhinged psychopathic stalker, uh, weirdos that are always in the comment section of anything that I put out. Like, remember when someone tried to say that I enslaved my mom because she was cooking for me when I brought her to Los Angeles to live with me during COVID? I was like, bro, that's like, there's like a lot of underlying issues. There's like a lot of underlying issues there for you to like come out with that statement without being embarrassed. Don Jenny, thank you for the 20 gifted subs. Like that was an insane statement. That's exactly what being a slave is like. And five people agreed? Slavery is when I have to do the dishes, even though I was the one who cooked that night. Simps love to defend this irrational thinking. Imagine if the genders were reversed. I know, right? Then the comments might be insane. Normalize men <laughs> doing chores. Normalize women changing oil and fixing the toilet and paying the bill. Ah, uh, yes, changing oil and fixing toilets. Two things that notoriously need to be done as often 
as the dishes. Shit, I change my oil every time I drive. Only the best for my car. How often do you even have to fix a toilet? Every couple of years at the most? What are you doing in there? Are you shitting grenades? Look, I don't know who this couple is, but I am positive that this eight second video does not sum up their entire relationship. Like in my house, Amanda does the dishes like 90% of the time but I cook 90% of the time. She cleans more often than I do, but I do all the grocery shopping. I don't know, one single chore doesn't tell the whole story. But even still, being in a relationship isn't supposed to be this one-to-one -one transactional exchange where every chore must be split down the middle and every good deed must be reciprocated immediately. Hey, I just did something nice for you. Do it back or I'm gonna post about this on TikTok. What are you talking about? It's my birthday. Oh, I'm supposed to give you a present too? You would if you loved me. Like, no, you just figure out what works best for you guys, and if something's not working, then you talk about it. Clearly these people- This man is a slave. <laughs> yeah, literally. Doesn't even realize it, dude. Dub. Bro, this is- <gasps> He's white. The other video that we just watched is real. White men are being enslaved right now by women. Hopefully white women, of course. Otherwise, it's white genocide. I mean, come on. People are traumatized from a past relationship where they had to do a chore and they haven't been able to stop thinking about it since. It's time to move on. All right, you gotta let that go. There's another common type of TikTok I've seen multiple renditions of. See you later. Bye. You've been a great out today. That's all right, thank you, bye. And honestly, I like TikToks like this because I think this is really healthy and a good thing to point out. Like having the desire to be by yourself for a little bit doesn't mean your marriage is bad all of a sudden or you've lost your spark. Most couples go through this. Most couples do this. You are still your own person with your own hobbies and interests. It's not the end of the world. Like sometimes Amanda comes home from work and wants to tell me everything that happened that day, and that's great. And other times she just wants to come home and listen to a podcast and play Stardew Valley for three hours. And both of those are fine. That's not good or healthy for couples. Well, this is crazy unhealthy in a relationship. That is terrible relationship advice. Yeah, except for, you know, you know who knows? You know who knows what good relationships look like? A 14-year-old on TikTok who's never been in a relationship. That's who knows what a healthy relationship should be like, okay? Do you understand? Or this guy, the Dutch conservative. Like, this guy made a TikTok, and he could have named himself anything, okay? Any number of things. And he went with the Dutch conservative. That guy probably has a healthy attitude about the planet. He probably has a healthy, healthy opinion. You know what I mean? These are IG real comments, by the way. Who cares? It's the same TikTok, IG, same bullshit, okay? Just even more divorced. If you're on, if you're on Instagram Reels comments, you're even more divorced somehow than, the, you know, TikTok comments. Vice, when kids are down, it's time to be together. Each of you should have some time to do what you like, but do it while kids are up. One watches kids, then the other. It's a very specific rule. Me and my husband, we have four kids. That was in the 80s. All I time was about them. Now that they are growing and have their own family, me and him have some our time. We love being and around each other, but like he wishing TV and working. I like being at home alone. And when we at home, we talk about everything. And then, like I said, he in one room and I am in another. We be merrier for 40s years get along just fine. I think she's on my side here. I'm not 100% sure though. If you love somebody, you'll expect to have its company as much as they can. It seems like there are two kinds of negative responses to this. There's the people who misinterpret it to mean that they don't want to spend any time together, even though that's not at all what they're saying. This is what, like an hour of their day, some of the time, relax. Not but there's also the people who use TikToks like this to just brag about their own relationship. Sad. We like to be with each other at bedtime, even after nine years of marriage. <laughs> Wait, you guys have alone time? That's a choice that you make. No, that's great. I'm happy for you. I guess it's just that you must not love each other very much because I spend every waking moment with my wife. We have the same job, the same hobbies, the same friend, us. Our bathroom has two toilets and they face each other. A few years back, I actually took a class on how to stop blinking and now I don't do it anymore. What can I say? I guess I missed her too much when my eyes are closed. Of you don't want to miss a single moment in the relationship like that. Just like you don't want to miss a single moment of the top of the hour ad break. Fuck, I fucked it up. At the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. If you don't want to miss a single moment of the stream, then all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Fuck. Or you get one free Prime subscription. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's a three minute ad break now. Fucking, I'm done, dude. Eight, nine hours of commentary. My brain is fried okay it's fried i'm sorry of course there's a balance to that by the way don jenny thank you for the 20 gifted subs 
The Alex Mana, thank you for the five get the subs. Maddie Coates, thank you for the five get the subs. Luna Lux nine, thank you for the five get the subs. That's like what? Thirty five people. No longer see the top of the hour ad break. That's crazy. This, as this guy will tell you, not realizing that the people who posted the TikTok would probably agree with him. If you never prioritize your partner and you're constantly blowing them off to just do whatever you want, go hang out with your friends, that's a problem. If 100% of the time you'd rather be hanging out with your boys than paying any attention to your girlfriend, you probably shouldn't be dating her you should be dating your boys. But at the same time, I wouldn't personally wanna be in a relationship where my life solely revolves around the other person. You need time to cultivate your own interests and work on yourself so you actually have something to bring to the table. Roman and honestly, last, sometimes when the your partner the is trying to minimize your other passions or turn you against your friends, it's kind of a manipulation tactic. They're trying to make you fully dependent on them so you have nowhere else to go and no one else in your life Absolutely. to point out all their the red flags. Things. I don't think a relationship should be about merging into one entity that is useless without the other person. Because if you get too far into it, you're gonna lose sight of who you were before you started dating. Just like with anything though, it comes down to what you and your partner agree on. If you both wanna spend 24 hours a day holding hands and staring into each other's eyes, go for it. That's awesome, I'm not gonna stop you. But that's what really gets me about these comments is that for the most part, everybody's just arguing for their own personal preference in a relationship that they're not a part of. If you see a video like this and you think, well, that wouldn't work for me, or my wife and I could never do something like that, that's literally fine because you're not in the relationship. Like, I just don't understand the need to go around imposing the rules of your marriage onto everyone else. Like, what's the point of even trying to argue with how this couple lives their lives? They've been together for 13 years. If this lifestyle was unsustainable for them, they wouldn't have been able to sustain it. If you see this couple happily on the same page about something and then decide that actually you know what's best for them more than they do, no, you don't. Shut up. In classic internet fashion though, I found another TikTok that's almost exactly the same as these ones, but all of the comments are angry for the opposite reason. After our kids go to bed, this is how my husband and I have been spending time together at night. I am re-watching all the Marvel movies and my husband Chaos. is over here racing in his racing simulator. <laughs> So we're like kind of together, right? Now I'll admit the vibe is a little different in this one. Whereas the other people were like proudly saying, hey, this is something we do. This is what works in our relationship. Uh, this woman seems a little bit more unsure. It also kind of looks like maybe she's been crying, but I don't know her life. I'm just gonna assume that it was from the movie. Ultimately, I don't know. And I'm not gonna speculate on it too hard because this is an Instagram reel and I don't know anything about these people is what I would say if I wasn't a crazy person. She just wants <laughs> him to do what she wants to do. Yeah, she's not happy. Something's going on. She is low-key putting him down. Instead of just talking to her husband, instead she tries to make a video. It's so cool that TikTok has basically created an environment for like every random normie to feel 15 seconds of like fame, but also in the worst and the worst elements that accompany it, which is like incredibly insane parasocial unhinged commentary about like uniquely private details about your life some of which you are willingly allowing people to peer into but many of which you are not okay anyone and everyone is making assertions about your relationship now hell welcome welcome to the hellish existence video and post it trying to shame him Did you cry a little less have you offered or shown any interest in playing games with him reach into his interests i understand that you are not enjoying this quality time visually obvious now the thing that these comments all have in common is that they're all working off of an assumption we have decided that this video is not sincere and since that's now a fact that we all can agree on, it's okay to bully you for it. So I was curious, I found them on TikTok. I just saw this one on Instagram. And they made multiple follow-up videos where they had to be like, guys, can you stop telling us to get a divorce? Like, we love each other. We love our kids. We spend a lot of time together. I was just- No, no, it, it's just, that only makes it worse because now you've recognized that people, they got to you. I saw someone comment, oh, you didn't post for five days. I thought your third attempt worked on some random creator. I watched some motherfuckers with their parasocial relationships are so unhinged. That's insane. It's kind of tired because we both worked all day and you guys are looking into this way too hard. Please stop, it's weird. Okay, so mystery solved, right? 
Um, and now that we have that context, I would like to present to you one of the most unhinged comments I have ever read in my life. I am certain that the purpose of this video was we've got this whole history and all I'm asking for him is to sit here and watch these movies with me. I even put on Marvel movies because he likes him and I want to bait him over here to spend time with me because he never spends time with me after all that we've been through. I don't even care about Marvel movies. Right, because Marvel movies- Guys, you're saying holy shit, but like, Everyone does this. Literally everyone does this. It's the same exact thing as like, what you're describing right now reminds me of what my father did to me. Like I might be talking about some dumb, like totally, totally ridiculous, like, like a joke. And then a chatter will be like, this is literally transphobia. This is like, like how someone uh, opened up the door to be transphobic because uh, like, it's just your own personal experience that you think is being uh, that you're watching basically it's literally it's it's just the same shit it's in, an incredibly common narcissistic trait for the most part usually like when i said the pride flag like the rainbow colors is like not uh it's not aesthetically pleasing right and someone was like well that's like that's how you start the that's how you open the door to being like you know homophobic and anti-lgbt see comments like these during your parasocial time at the beginning of the stream yeah, I mean, this is the, yeah, this is the greatest tweet of all time, but like, sorry, not sorry, not going to care about Afghanistan because I grew up with an alcoholic, psychologically abusive uh, father in constant state of distress and anxiety and worry about the future. Hearing the key in the door every evening was my own Afghanistan for almost 20 years. Like, that's just... What? Like, that seems like a you issue. Who's over boys and women can't like superheroes. I'm just making sacrifices to stop enjoying my life, not doing things I want to do or grow as a person, have a hobby, all for him to just pay me the slightest bit of attention. No one appreciates sacrifices they didn't ask for. Do what you want to do. If that doesn't feel like quality time, speak up. If you feel like this relationship is costing everything you want from life, speak up. Otherwise, shut up. Holy we're not even halfway through, by the way. And if you do speak up and that's not what he wants, it's okay to move on with your life. If you feel like you could do better and deserve more, go reach for it. But don't go crawling back just because you don't like the new life you have after you've thrown away your old one and destroyed all semblance of peace for yourself and your family. Stop wasting your time doing things that don't make you happy. You literally have this one life and you're choosing to cry on TikTok rather than make a meaningful difference. Obviously, he's happy and comfortable the way it is. And if you divorce him, he'll probably just enjoy more of his free time after a fucked up dark period of feeling worthless and that nothing that he does is enough because that's what you're saying here nothing that has happened before was enough for you i think we should do mandatory therapy and medicare for all just for this reason okay like i think we can make an we can make an argument for therapy like universal health care and therapy for everybody specifically by pointing to this and other tweets and other takes like this so we can just like eliminate it from uh, public consciousness, okay? Using the internet, you need a license. Yeah, that that's cool too. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Like, I mean, this is just like this. This only happens when you're you're just when you have like so much unresolved trauma. Bernie needs to do a speech with clips like this playing in the background. Yes, men and women are chirping on TikTok comment sections. And the only way we can stop them from chirping nonstop is by doing Medicare for all and healthcare and mental health care for all Americans. You absolute insanity aside, he based this entire rant on the assumption that she's pretending to like the movies. Like you never stop to think, hmm, what if this thing I'm making up isn't actually true? That would kind of destroy my entire argument and make me look like an asshole. Nah, I'll do it anyway. Isn't it fun though that the internet is so used to just yelling at each other all the time that you can post two videos with essentially the same thesis and cause a riot for two opposite reasons? Social media is so fun. I'm having a great time. Now, if you're anything like me, seeing all of this unasked for discourse kind of makes you never want to post any private information about yourself because people are just going to use it to bully you or speculate on your behalf. You might even think to post a TikTok where you're like, hey, my partner doesn't post about me on social media, but that doesn't mean the relationship doesn't work because he loves me in real life. And that's really all that matters to me. Only to find out that even that's wrong too. God, and don't even get me started on parenting TikTok. I would. Wait, I want to see the unhinged comments. Now, Come on. that even that's- He hides me, but my expenses are paid. I don't know, sis. I'll pay for my own shit till I find the one who's proud of me. 
He don't post you because you don't want the other girls to see he's sliding in DMs and living in a whole different life on social media, lusting over other women and have desires. Do we deserve that? We got to stop settling for what's not our values and worth. Money is easy to get. Be with someone who isn't afraid of showing you. 331 likes. So spoiled and nothing to contribute to the relationship? Okay. 80 likes. That's wrong too. God, and don't even get me started on parenting TikTok. I would never in a million years post a video of my child because I'm just gonna get a bunch of comments from people telling me that I'm doing everything wrong. Like you'll see a video of a kid falling down, right? I'm not saying I seek those kind of videos out or anything. It's just sometimes they pop up. Oh, come on, they're they're funny. Come on, there's always fun. And I watch them, okay? But the kid will fall down, right? And the mom will be Objectively like, oh no, hilarious. are you okay? And someone will comment, wrong. Let her get up on her own or she'll never learn how to be independent. And then you'll see the same kind of video where the parent will instead be like, hey buddy, you're, you're fine, just shake it off. Wrong. She's clearly hurt. You were supposed to keep her safe and you failed. Bro, no, this is literally like when, when people come into my chat to be like, uh, why did you upset Will Neff? You know what I mean? And it's like, bro, this dude, I've known him for like 12 years. Like you, you watch him for 35 minutes a night. You know what I mean? Like you think, you think you know our relationship better? Like what is this? And, and that is basically the same shit happening here to just random normies who made the crime or mistake of posting on the internet. And now she'll never trust anyone and it's all your fault. It's like, okay, what am I supposed to do then? Because it doesn't seem like anything is right to you guys. What's ironic about this though is I feel like a lot of these kind of commenters are the same people who will shame young people for not. Why is, this is why your population is declining? A wasted life, you two might as well go on palliative care. It's better to find eternal meaning through your children than temporary happiness through a game, but you do you. It's probably because our lives are more than just our own. And to think that way it comes off as being arrogant and Having selfish. kids yet? Come on, Oh my God. Guys, be useful to society. Give birth already. And then post about them so we can nitpick all of your choices. Really though, that's just yeah. like the whole internet right now. No matter what kind of content you're making, no matter what you're doing, you'll just be living your life. And then someone will be like, um, that's not how I would do it. Well, I didn't ask, buddy. Now the last video I wanna point out has some pretty insane discourse, uh, partly because I found it on Twitter. I mean, in general, when a TikTok gets reposted to Twitter, oh, it's that's not when usually it gets like, real hey, crazy. look at this funny TikTok I found. Oh, it gets it's really like, worse. Hey, look at this piece of I found. We should set their house on fire. Day one oh, of being yeah. a stay-at-home husband. Oh yeah, I love this one. This was so funny. Like, it's so f cute, and people were so crazy about it. Of course. And cuddled on the couch, and then I started to pack her lunch before she went to work with all her favorite foods. Snuck in a love note. Drove her to work. You get the idea. You know, it's a guy who loves his wife and is clearly doing a good job. It was so. It was so sweet. It's like. Dude, God forbid, the biggest mistake you can ever make is like show that you're happy on the internet. Holy f people will find a way to just rip it apart, dude. Of taking care of her, they seem to be in a healthy, happy relationship. Not really anything to judge, right? This is more disturbing than gore. In then the... Uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, totally. That was my takeaway, too. That's what I was going to say. I know I looked at that and said, oh, how wonderful, a couple in love and like being supportive to one another, but that this is the... Actually, this is my takeaway too. Now I, I take it back. Um, so fucking statue PFP, dude. Of course. Oh God. Ah, oh, Western civilization is under attack, and the only way we can stop the moral decay is by making all of our Twitter avatars statues of Greek, you know, from the Greek era, from ancient Greece, and that's the only way to stop it. We're gonna plug the dam of moral degeneracy destroying the west with my statue avatar that's i'm gonna do that fucking statue pfps dude antiquity was so much better bro dog into antiquity pff, no one be helping out their wives dude you fucking kidding me say you're a pedophile dude just just say it what universe is that a superior life to living alone it's a terrible lesbian couple okay i lost it at the beyond me oh my god was they're there, all was there like a meeting they all went to where they all decided one day that all the guys like this on Twitter have to change their profile picture to some random dead guy statue? What is it? Oh, oh. Drew is such a wonderful, kind individual who does not know the f insanity of Twitter. Like, that's how you know this mother is a normie, okay? I'm gonna make this mine. <laughs> yeah, no, that just means that they're trad, which means that they're, you know, oftentimes just like, 
white supremacist right wingers. Is it me? Every time you see someone on Twitter with a profile picture like this, I promise you they're about to say the worst take you've ever heard. The only thing gay here is using a straw at home. Fellas. Is it gay to drink stuff? Have you noticed that like everything has discourse now? Everything is a debate, even if it doesn't need to be. And some of it is constructive. Of course, some of it is very- Bro, I was so ahead of the game with this, saying that debate perverts need to be abolished. Debate perverts need to go to jail. I was so ahead of the game, straight up. One of my greatest locks of all time. I know that it ruffled a lot of feathers at the time, but God damn, dude. Everyone is just like always trying to duke it out. It's like, shut the up. I don't want to hear from you. Your opinion is not valid. I don't care. You're just as stupid as I am. You're on the internet, okay? Why the f would I ever learn anything new or interesting from you, okay? We're both mentally ill loser dumbasses on the internet chirping around, okay? Why would I learn anything productive from you? I know my skull is hollowed out, so you are probably the same, okay? I don't want to hear that. It's so much worse now because they have Twitter blue check marks and you see mutuals retweeting them posting a fake video. Oh yeah, always that too. Pretty much worth having, but then I'll see people arguing about like which basketball player is having a better season or how much cream you're supposed to put in your coffee. Like the fate of the world is on the line. I feel like there's this anger that's seeped into every part of the internet and it's so hard to avoid without just staying off of it altogether. Like you'll see the most innocuous comment in the world that for some reason has 97 replies and you're like, huh, what happened here? And the most recent reply will be like, Don't no, I'm not the one defending genocide. You're the one. And it's like, huh, how did they, what? Who even brought that up? And I think what really sucks about it is so much of it is by design. Like there were those documents that came out that showed Facebook's algorithm was more likely to suggest something if a lot of people were using the angry reaction emoji. And then outside of Facebook on Twitter, I've noticed that a lot of times the tweet at the top of a thread is not the one with the most likes, but the one with the most replies because it's the most controversial. It is the most likely way to stretch out the amount of time you spend on that thread because now instead of just the one original paragraph, there's now dozens of insane ramblings for you to scroll through. Even Instagram is starting to show huh. some of the worst comments near the top. That's how I found the ones in this video. I wasn't scrolling to the bottom. They were at the top. And it's all because a computer told them that these kind of comments increase engagement. Let's not worry about what kind of engagement. Let's not worry about the fact that this specific kind of engagement actually makes people feel like shit and they're worse off when they leave the app than they were when they came onto the app. Oh, and yeah. not only is this making the overall user experience more negative, but by showing the hateful comments to more people because you know that that's what will get them to interact with it aren't you like actively encouraging people to write hateful things like most of the time if someone's being an asshole online they're just doing it to rile people up they're doing it to get a response and if the algorithms did a better job of flagging and suppressing those things and maybe after a while those people would be like hmm it seems my efforts are fruitless this is no way to spend my days i need to get my shit together and then they like put on a suit and tie but from like the user side our side, I don't really know what the answer is besides just like spending less time on the internet. It just sucks though, cause sometimes it's really fun, you know? Sometimes I don't get pissed off at all. I just laugh a lot. I like the internet. I like connecting with people across Fuck the you. world. I like finding new talented creators no. and following them and seeing no. what kind of stuff they make. There's so much good out there. I just, I wish it wasn't so depressing sometimes. Anyway, for all the people who have sat through this whole rant and didn't care cause they don't really listen to me when I talk and they only watch these videos to see the ad read at the end, you're in luck because today's video is sponsored. Okay. All right, let's watch this cut video and then I'm going to do okay, buddy. I don't want to be horny anymore. I just want to be happy. Oh, it's true. I do feel that way. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>